Yeah, hello, hello on the last day of the fair. Um, so my name is uh, Philipp Ambruster, and I'm in the marketing for Edge Computing. And my name is Rivki Vinando, and responsible for performance management in marketing too. We now talked a lot about cloud computing. Um, probably you were also listening to the morning call, um, digital enterprise. So how does all of this comes together? Now we have a big new topic, edge computing. This is part of today. Um, and the application you have seen, we will also bring on the edge down into the shop floor. And how this works, we will now discuss in more detail. Yes. <clears throat> Who knows edge computing? Please, hands up. Not bad, not bad, not bad, Philip. And who has already implemented edge computing? Okay. <laughs> so, you are right here. Today, we will show you how you can implement edge computing. But what are the most important use cases? We have interviewed, and this is the result. How about with predictive maintenance at your side? About quality assurance? Our survey showed that predictive maintenance is the most important use case in edge computing. Today, we have an example in our factory in Amberg. Yeah. And with this real-world example, and so easy as possible, this is also why we have this style, by the way, to make it as easy as possible to understand for you what you can really do with edge computing and with a real example. Let's get started. So in our plant in Amberg, in Germany, we are factoring semantic components, like the CPUs. Um, and as you can see on the right side here, the semantic components are being packed inside the packaging machine. From the left side, there's a carton being moved by a vacuum system from A to B, right? And what happens if it doesn't work properly? Exactly, this is the big question. So if it doesn't work properly, well, the machine is going to stop. And this is a really big issue because it costs us a lot of availability of the machine and a lot of money in the end. Um, so if the vacuum systems, if the grippers doesn't work properly anymore, then the, the cartons are being lost, they are dropped, and they are falling on the ground, which you can see here. Then the maintenance personnel needs to go inside, clean it up, starts the machine again, and everything runs again. But as you can imagine, this costs a lot of money in the end. Now, there are two things which can happen why this situation occurs. First one, the suction grippers, if we move it millions of times, um, sucking in the air, dropping the air, sucking in all the time, the vacuum, vacuum, <laughs> the vacuum suck, the suction grippers get a bit um, worn off because it's rubber. And this means if they don't have the grip anymore, they lose it, they lose the material. Second reason, if too much dust is in the air, then the filter system can get clogged and then the material is also being dropped down. And in both cases, the machine is standing still. So now the very big question is, which also leads us to edge computing, can we predict this? And the answer is yes, with predictive maintenance. And thanks to edge computing, now we show in five steps how it works. Let's start with the first step. <laughs> To make an analysis, you, we need the data, the important data, like suction time, compressed air consumption, and leakage rate. We have already the data in the PLC, but the PLC is responsible for the machine, for the control of the machine. The PLC doesn't deliver data analytics, Philips. Yeah, Rivki, that's right, because this is not a job of the PLC. The PLC should not do the very, very complex data analytics. Mm. And this is why we need, in the second step, a separate device, because the PLC should continue to automate the process and make sure the machine runs really in a normal and perfect way. So step two, 
we need an edge device, a device where we can do the challenging data analytics. And what do we mean with challenging? Well, first of all, we talk about huge amounts of data which are being generated on the shop floor, on the PLC. Then often we have applications which require very short latencies and very fast decisions. And all of that often needs to be implemented with complex algorithms, meaning high-level programming languages, artificial intelligence, or more. OK, Philip. The data is now in edge device. But how can I analyze the data? It means we need the third step, an app. This app analyzes and stores the data, such as compressed air consumption and suction time and calculates the perfect time to maintain the machine. In addition, the app shows us how much time is remaining and which spare part must be replaced. Of course, it's, this is not easy, but this is, exact, this is exactly your know-how. And how Good. we can get the, the app, Philip? Quite simple via App Store. Or your program, your application on your own. So two possibilities, App Store or own programming, right? OK, so far, let's take a short summary of what we did. So predictive maintenance with edge computing for now. We have the real world example in our manufacturing site from Amberg, where one of our customers is um, delivering the vacuum systems to us. He provides us with the edge device. The big data is being collected out of the controller, analyzed on the edge device with a certain application. And now this application can predict the perfect time to do the next maintenance. For sure, we save a lot of money because we don't need to work on a machine all the time anymore, and the machine has nearly no downtimes. OK. And as you now can see, well, probably edge computing looks kind of easy, right? Because you have a device like with your smartphone, you have applications running on it, and data is being analyzed. The data is always remaining on your shop floor, on your edge device. It's a very important second factor. And well, the third one is, we had already told you, we can now analyze huge amounts of data with edge computing right where the data is being produced at the machine. And last but not least, the automation continues to control the process, and data is being analyzed with edge computing. So the automation is really separated and can work independently. It's very important to ensure the uptime of the machine. Since we produce more than 1,000 SIMATIC components, then we don't have only one packaging machines, but several machines. Each machine has an edge device. So, Rifki, what about the update? Uh, so imagine the algorithm gets better over time, so it gets frequent updates, the application. But how can we provide the updates to the edge devices? So with my smartphone this evening, I plug it in, uh, the power um, system, and then overnight, I get automatically updates from the store. Here it's kind of similar, but how did we do it till today? I've talked to a lot of you out there, and many of you probably still go to the machines by hand with the USB stick, running from one machine to the next machine and updating the devices, the PC-based solutions. Now we recognize this and try to improve it for you. So the idea is that I can provide the app update from one centralized management system, from one central instance. And we call this edge management system. From there on, I have like a PC, an installation in my factory, and I can administrate all connected edge devices in the factory and deploy new updates of it directly onto new, uh, on each device. Not only app updates, but also new apps, security patches, and firmware patches. Very easy, with a few clicks. We produce Cimatic not only in Amberg, but also in Fert and also in Sengdu in China. So it means we have also the packaging machinery there. And 
they should be also maintained with edge computing. So therefore, we need the step five. If you have more one location, then you need cloud. With the cloud, we can now manage the apps and the functionality to worldwide connected edge devices. Compared to the local solution, you need only one click instead three clicks. In addition, we can manage our software product in standardized way. This saves time, effort, and also money. And by the way, this cloud which you see here could be, for example, MindSphere, our cloud-based IoT operating system. And the important thing, the data is remaining local in your production. Exactly. So those were now the five steps for edge computing. Let me summarize it once again for you. So we can now predict the failure of the machine, of the vacuum systems, in a very good way because the OEM provided us with this application and with his know-how. Um, so what we did, again, in the big picture, we started with the vacuum system. We have several ones in the production environment. We collect the data out of each gripping system, send it to the edge device, and analyze it there with a very intelligent IT-based application. And if I want to provide updates or manage my devices, deploy new ap uh, applications, I connect it to the central management system and can do it from there on inside the factory. But as Rifki told you, if you have multiple production sites around the world, you could also manage everything globally from the cloud, such as MindSphere, and provide applications from there onto the edge devices. So your infrastructure is really up to date all the time. OK, so in the end, again, what are the benefits? With edge computing, we can now handle data very easily with apps in real time close to the process. The data itself, your know-how, stays securely on the shop floor level, on the edge devices. And, and this is one of my important, important points here, with, which we have. We are now really future-proof, because as you get in the evening updates from your smartphone, in industry, our machines will also be updated in a way more frequent way in the future. And this we can do with edge computing. And last but not least, because we can now implement IT into automation, we have a lot of new possibilities to analyze data, to do condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, and stuff like that. Good. So if you need more information about edge computing, just come to our booth, Cloud at Edge Computing over there. And thank you very much for your attention. Siemens, ingenuity for life.